Thanks for joining me. Here we are again. And in today's episode, we will be firing up the VFR 750F RC36. Now, I'm going to show you how we did it. Up inside there, and it goes to the back just there. Up inside that aluminium tube there is this oh, no. this ring this is a new one feels lovely and soft this is the old one that is flattened and plasticky only little thing i polished the clamps all of the spigots all of those places where the hoses go on need cleaning up not taking it apart because it hasn't failed. I'm cleaning up the outside so that the hoses can clamp on properly. Not a difficult job. Oil filter arrived this morning. Just there you can see a little rubber cap that's on the side of that and that and that and that inlet in the head they are that you what you would attach a carb balancing tool with right these are the carb inlet rubbers okay these are what mount the carbs to the head I can't crush the old one I can crush a new one new one is rubbery and flexible old one for the bin. As promised, here's the carbs. Just here, you've got your float. Okay. These carbs are upside down right now. So for those who've never seen a carb before, let's put gravity upside down. Okay, so there's gravity. Pulling these down, because they're upside down. As the fuel goes in, the float rises and shuts off any more fuel coming into this bowl here which is your it's just a reservoir it's just a little bath little reservoir of petrol that your different suction points all sit in so that's filled with fuel and these different jets suck fuel from this bath depending on whereabouts your throttle opening is there's the pivot. You can't grab that end of the pivot pin because it's not sticking out far enough and you can't grab that end of the pivot pin or push it because there's this brass rod there. So what you do is you put your, you put your blade there and there you go. This here is the float valve don't forget it's don't, this rises don't forget i'm showing you upside down and pushes this point into the hole to stop the fuel this is a common problem on most carbies is that um that inlet valve um stopping stopping working and you can identify that your float valve is not working where if you turn your petrol tap on and fuel goes straight through your carby and just starts pissing out onto the floor. If it's just going straight through the carbon onto the floor, then this little valve has not told the, um, has not told the fuel, nap nah, we're full. I have got a Keister carby kit when your bottle throttle is full open, it is the hole in this jet that decides how much fuel is going into your combustion chamber. And so that you know what that is, it's got a number written on it. Now, I've given that one there a rub. And because they're in very tiny letters, that's what I've got the um, magnifying glass out for. They've got numbers on them. Numbers on this are 130. Okay, 
So we're not going to replace them with the new shiny Keister jets, even though they're shiny, because these are 125. So shiny though they are, they're the wrong size. Not Keister's problem, because our VFR is fitted with a big bore exhaust. And most of your modifications for performance will usually require more fuel to come in. So even though our jet is crusty, it's fine. Uh, and it's never the main jet that blocks anyway because it's got a darn big hole in it. Hang on, let me show you. Here's one of my prodders. This prodder here, straight through, no problem at all. Main jet's never gonna block. But pilot jet, that is this one here, is the jet that meters out the fuel when you're idling. This also has a number on it, and this is also a different number to the one that came in the Keister kit. The one that came in the Keister kit, I think. I won't bother looking at it again. Anyway, but it's smaller. Okay, so we are gonna use the original jet. However, the little prodder that I used for the main jet won't go through this because even when it's absolutely fine, the hole inside this jet, up the end of it, is smaller. Now, on one of these, I found this absolutely blocked solid and Okay, this one isn't. Now, I've got a guitar string going between, between this, okay? Now, you saw that thin, this thin piece of wire wouldn't go through it. That's pretty thin, but this guitar string will, okay? So, don't worry. It, you oh, and blow through it. Although it won't let much air out, when you're blowing, don't worry, that's enough. It is a very, very narrow jet to let a very little bit of fuel in when your bike's idling. It doesn't need much fuel. What a surprise that is. Before you remove this, you do this. You screw it in, but you very carefully count how many turns, okay? Half, one, one and a half, two, two and a quarter. Okay, now you know that its original factory setting was two and a quarter, turns out, you can just go ahead. That was a really dreadful American accent. Still easier to do than the Australian accent there. Okay, so now you know that when it goes back in, it's gonna be two and a quarter turns out. You can pop that out. That is tensioned by a tiny little screw that is in there. And that screw, sorry, spring. And that spring is protected from the aluminium body of the carb by the world's tiniest little washer. Don't lose that washer. If you do lose that washer, it's, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work properly. So just don't lose it. But as it happens, the Keister kit does come with new tiny washers. The main jet goes into this with a seven mil head on it. Seven mil? Yes, it is. This is the emulsion tube. And that's what your main jet sits on the end of. And your needle goes up and down inside and it has holes down the side of it. I'm just using a little bit of scotch bright. You'll have to excuse me touching the camera. There we go. Um, the emulsion tube is identified by the little holes in the side of it. Oh, that's too thick. Where's my guitar string? My guitar string. Thank you very much. Um, this has holes down the side of it. And I am going to poke those holes through just to make sure that they are clear. I'll show you what I mean by coming on the side. Boink. There we go. So we're going to keep, there's a hole down the center of it. 
and there's holes through the side of it and I'm poking them clear. Watch your eyes with this. Um, don't forget if these passageways are blocked and most of them are, um, then the cleaner will come back up towards you. If you try and spray down into something that's blocked, it will come up back towards you and see? Ah, I can see that that's clear now, okay? That's coming through there. That's coming through there. Is that a bit of a clean? Is that a bit of a clean? Let's have another look at you. <laughs> this so wants to get in your eyes. So if you hear it gurgling out the back of a carburetor, then it's clear. And if it's not, if it's not gurgling out the back and it's spraying in your face, it's blocked. Uh, if you're thinking of this as daunting, try not to think of it as for cleaning four carbies. Think of it as cleaning one carby four times. These cobs are all the same. Okay, right. Can't get any air, uh, sorry, can't get my guitar string down there. So I'm gonna touch the front of the camera. Uh, I've got some compressed air and I'm gonna see if I can clear it with the, with a bit of, with a bit of compressed air. Ooh. By the way, I've got a ultrasonic cleaning tank over there, which I'm not using because I don't want to dismantle the whole thing. Uh, I don't think it's necessary. And, and you might not have one. The other good thing is, because we've got four carbs. Um, if you're wondering what gallery goes where and what tube leads to where inside, the chances of them all being blocked exactly the same are quite remote. So what I just did just then is I checked one against the performance of the others. So I just shot some, few, shot some carby cleaner down there, nothing really came out. And when I shot it down there, it came out of there. There it came out of there. So I'm, what I'm just doing here at the moment is trying to make sure that all of my carbs behave in the same manner. Your valve seats for your fuel inlet valve or your float valve, whatever you want to call it, that pointy, that pointy torpedo that goes in to stop to shut the fuel off so fuel shut off valve if you want to call it what i do is i put a cotton bud or a q-tip i think if you call them in america i put it in there with some um, metal polish and just give it a swizz and that's just because i want that fuel shut off valve to seat very nicely and I don't want any crap in there. Just giving it a bit of a polish. Let's put the other end in to get any of that off. Fuel bowl off. Be crusty and yellowy in there, but that's okay. Carby cleaner will get that out. Let's get the pin out that allows the float to come up and the valve to come out. Chuck that in there, chuck that in there. Let's remove the main jet. 
Go on, this is looking pretty crappy, this one is. I'm surprised how different these are, actually. This one's really quite crusty. Let's pop you in there. Let's remove the emulsion tube. Oh, filth! But don't forget what we're going to do with the emulsion tube. Make sure that the emulsion holes down the side of the tube are clear. Right, let's get the idle jet out. Okay. I expect this to be blocked because its hole is much smaller. And it is blocked. <laughs> Doesn't taste very nice. We are going to get the guitar string. The guitar string down there oh there you go i actually felt it go then as it pushed the blockage out there we go we are now clear in this operation here that we're doing we're not doing any more than opening up these holes that have been blocked with congealed crappy petrol we're looking down at the fuel inlet valve seats this one's been done this one's been done this one's been done. This one hasn't been done. Okay? That's why I showed you. Done. 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 Not done. I can't show you with the camera right down there. All I can do is tell you that it's crusty and that valve would not seat on that. Unclean valve seat. Cotton bud. Twizzle, 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 twizzle. Twizzle while you work. <whistles> so there's no, nothing stopping the valve seating. Because if there's any crap in there, or corrosion or anything like that, or congealed petrol. It won't sit in properly. There we go. Done now. So these little valves that I've got, um, are these rubber tipped ones? Some of these are rubber tipped. Yeah, it is rubber tipped. Uh, I'm going to use new ones that came in the kit anyway. Just put all the floats back in. Boink, boink. And now I've used new valves. There's very little of this new hardware that I have used. And there doesn't seem to be a heck of a lot wrong with the old ones, but. And I've done a visual comparison, and that's an important thing. Um, there's no need to, these jets are the wrong size for me. And that doesn't mean that they're the wrong size for you, but. I had a problem with the GPZ750 that I'd done that I couldn't get running. And I just put the whole kit in. And when I went back to using the old needles that were already in my original um, carbs before I replaced half the stuff, um, it ran better. So don't replace stuff unnecessarily or just assume, hey, look, I've paid for it, so let's put it in. If there's nothing wrong with your old part and it's a different size, use your old part. I'm replacing the rubber seal that's in the uh, float chamber, that seals the float chamber, um, the fuel float. The old seal is really pretty manky, really meh, not very good. Um, so you clean out that, uh, that channel. It's like it's got some sort of glue in there to help that seal stick and what concerns me a little bit is that the new seal isn't really what I'd call a fabulous fit it's going to be a bit of a pain yeah we can see that and there's not a heck of a lot that you can do to get it to to encourage it to sit in the right place while you sort of muck it around. 
What I've done on this one here is I've used some aviation sealant. Dun, dun, dun. So I use some aviation sealant, which is the non-drying gluey stuff for sealing. It's, it's pretty good. I like it. And it's it's not like RTV or silicon. It's just a very thin paint. It's like Vegemite, actually. It smells like it as well. Um, to get the seal to stick in. So that's what I'm going to do. Because it's... Yeah. So anyway, so I stuck the other one in. And then I held the float bowl still and put the carby on top of it because obviously if you go like that hey off it comes um i'm gonna i'll put some with that aviation sealant on and then i'll show you now the aviation sealant comes with this big brush this one here but i don't use it i always use a little artist brush to get the sealant in and not too much so that it's going everywhere. Not good. Not happy, Bob. Not happy. So here's my rig. There's the funnel. Now, since I quit drinking alcohol, I've been drinking a heck of a lot of this water. And Although I don't want to find it leaking, it sure is better to find it leaking now than later. And it's still leaking. See it? And that bolt. Luckily, it's only the one. So I'm still going to do it again. There you go, it just dropped then. And that is how it's done. Which is just as well, because I was starting to get hacked off with it. I bought fuel, not fuel, I bought oil, and I bought coolant, and fork oil today. The hoses went back on yesterday. The oil filter, new oil filter went on, old oil came out, air filter's there. We could go together tonight maybe gobs are on um it was just a bit of brute force um i found a place to press on them um and just press down with my hands i had put a little bit of a tiniest smear of rubber grease on the inside of the manifolds to encourage them these gobs to pop in stayed up late last night did some work on it. Uh, it was quite late and my wife had gone to bed, so I couldn't do talking to the camera, so I didn't film a lot of it. But you can see where I'm up to. We're about to start it. Got the battery in, check. Coolant in, got the oil in, got the air box on, new filter, got the bell mouths on inside the filter box, which I forgot once and then I had to take them all off again. Got some of these tubes connected. I have disabled the fuel pump, just disconnected it, and run the inlet, fuel the fuel inlet to a gravity feed just to see how it goes. Um, this is first fire up. I don't have a tripod to put you on because it's holding the uh, <laughs> it's holding this. So let's put the choke on. Okay, I can see you recording. Wish me luck. That 
that smoke that's coming off is just all the crap that's on the exhaust and all that stuff. It is not uh, combustible. And if it was anyway, never have a fire extinguisher far away, especially during the first fire up. Um, that's just WD-40 and engine chemical cleaner, burning off the exhaust, that's all good. Yeah, that'll do me. 